For the past two years, 11-year-old Catherine Griselka has coughed. <coughs> I've had like inhalers and allergy medicine, huge chills, I've had swallowing all kinds of stuff. That's annoying. <coughs> Catherine's mother, Heather, says her daughter was perfectly healthy before they moved to suburban Washington from a small town in Texas in 2007. But she says that over the past two years, they've made countless trips to doctor's offices and medical specialists, all to find the cause of Catherine's cough. Her diagnosis changes from asthma to severe allergies to having a habit cough. So Heather has given up on medical diagnoses for the moment. She's blaming Catherine's cough on what she sees as heavy air pollution in her area. Our home is sandwiched between two busy highways, and so is her school, so she never has a break from breathing this heavy pollution. Heather Griselka works for the American Lung Association and for years has been a health care advocate. But now she finds herself in the unfamiliar role of victim. Not only does she watch and hear her daughter cough endlessly, but she herself suffers from an array of respiratory ailments, made worse, she feels, by dirty air. So as you know, nitrogen On Monday, she testified before officials of the Environmental Protection Agency in Washington, joining others who say they suffer from poor air quality. The EPA had invited public comment on its proposed strengthening of nitrogen dioxide, or NO2, standards. NO2 is formed by emissions from cars, trucks, and power plants. It contributes to the formation of ozone and is thought to aggravate respiratory problems, especially asthma. Rosalina Rodriguez of the EPA. We have found since our last review in 1996 that there are new epidemiological studies that are raising uh, health issues, especially in children, the elderly, asthmatics, and uh, sensitive subpopulations. So we have strong scientific evidence that requires us to take some action. <laughs> According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, an estimated 23 million Americans suffer from asthma, exacting a huge economic cost. Under the Clean Air Act, the EPA is required to review national air quality standards. The proposal on the table would set, for the first time, a one-hour NO2 standard at much more stringent levels. This would limit short-term exposure to NO2. But Howard Feldman of the American Petroleum Institute, a lobbying group for the oil and gas industry, says the EPA's new proposal is not needed and that the agency's own data shows sharp decreases in NO2 concentrations. He says his industry has already cleaned up its act. There's cleaner diesel fuel coming in, cleaner trucks coming in, and cleanup efforts that have been made at stationary sources at power plants and at refineries that people have spent a lot of money to continue that cleanup. So that cleanup will continue for the next decades to come. Another public hearing is set for this week in Los Angeles, where air pollution is a major issue. California has one of the most stringent NO2 standards in the nation, and many who testified Monday urged the EPA to follow that state's lead. Health experts there have published studies suggesting long-term NO2 exposure harms lung growth and function in children. Today's hearing is critical because it's given voice to me and my family, as well as other public health advocates and just other members of the public who care about their kids and want to see the air quality in this area and our nation improve. EPA officials say they will register citizens' comments over the next 60 days and order a final ruling in January 2010. Laurel Bowman, VOA News, Washington.